Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is David Schlotthauer here with another detailed weather update for April the 12th, 2023. In this video, we are keeping an eye on a weather system that could bring in some severe weather chances for the High Plains and even for the Midwest for Friday and Saturday. So here's a detailed look at the latest water vapor imagery from tropicaltidbits.com and we can see what our weather pattern is currently doing right now and how that will lead to the upcoming severe weather concerns for Friday and into Saturday. So first of all, we have a cut off low pressure system over the deep south here you can see it spinning about here in the overall flow and then of course we have another trough of low pressure that is approaching the pacific northwest keeping us much cooler and actually brought temperatures down quite a bit from two days ago this trough is on its way eastward in the next couple of days as this ridge of high pressure here over the Great Lakes moves eastward as this trough moves in. So the pattern is changing and that means we have a lot to talk about in this video as far as the severe weather goes for Friday and Saturday. So here's a look at the European model for Friday afternoon into early Saturday for the High Plains. I'm going to not stress enough though, be careful who you watch on YouTube because I've already did some research and already a couple of YouTube channels, I'm not going to mention who those are, but you know who you are, they're already talking about that this is going to be a monster storm, this is going to cause significant to life-threatening impacts, this is going to be a severe weather outbreak and such. Please be careful who you watch, please, that's all I beg for, because they're probably doing it just to get views, they're doing it just to kind of scare the public. In my case, I've backed off from hyping crap up um, over the last five or six months, of course, and I'm more considerate or conservative in my forecast. So, in my personal opinion, this is not, this is not going to be a severe weather outbreak probably barely a severe weather event in itself other than we might see two plus inch hailstones possible with some of these storms that do want to pop up in the afternoon due to uh, strong boundary layer heating land heating that seems to destabilize the atmosphere enough forcing along this dry line to kick up some storms near the kansas metro area by Friday afternoon. We also got a chance of storms that look to pop up over Nebraska as well as western Iowa, but nothing screams out to me that this is going to be a tornado outbreak. I just don't see it. Some YouTube channels are going to say strong tornadoes are looking possible to likely. Please, again, watch what you watch on YouTube. I can't stop you from watching those channels. Again, I'm not here to prevent people from watching uh, other YouTube weather channels, but just be careful which source you actually view because some people do like to hype up stuff and some don't, such as me. So we can see here by Friday afternoon into Saturday morning, maybe a rogue supercell here that wants to um, continue, but likely this atmosphere looks to have a lot of inhibition, which is basically how much energy is there to prevent a thunderstorm from developing, usually with an inversion. Colder air at the surface, warmer, drier air aloft, usually with an EML. That what that likes to do is cap off the atmosphere. So Again, maybe a storm here and there likely going to be elevated with um, eastward extent until the following day on Saturday when surface space storms look to return, especially for Missouri, Iowa, and southward, including for Illinois. So let's talk about Saturday's severe weather event here on Pivotal Weather on the Euro. We get Again, we get um, the elevated nature of these storms early on in the day. They become more surface-based by early afternoon into the evening hours into a pretty intense linear line segment here. So all severe hazards are expected with this line of storms. This includes possibly one to two plus inch hailstones. 55 to 65 mile an hour wind gusts and possibly a couple of tornadoes that are not likely to be strong in particular please quote me on that a couple of tornadoes that will likely be below strong territory okay now that doesn't mean there will not be any strong tornadoes but the chances of that are low 
confidence of strong tornadoes, but there might be a few kinks within this line that may have a risk for producing tornadoes, along with, to go with a, a few swaths of 65 mile an hour wind gusts, along to go with some large hail too. So that's the line extending from Western Illinois, Central and Southern Illinois into Memphis, Tennessee, uh, as well as Western Kentucky, all the way down into Northwestern Mississippi by zero Z on Sunday. This would be Saturday evening, right around seven and eight o'clock on Central Daylight Time. This has already moved through the Missouri area. This is going to be moving through very quickly, so very little in the way of impacts are anticipated. And then that kind of falls apart as this moves further east, all the way into Sunday morning. But still in all, maybe some showers and thunderstorms from eastern Tennessee southward into um, perhaps Georgia and the Carolinas, including for Indiana. All right, so that's again what the Euro thinks. Now, let's take a look at the dynamics behind all of this. All right, of course, we have the players on the field, and the players on the field are what? What did we just talk about at the beginning of the video? Well, on the water vapor imagery, we saw a low pressure system that's cut off we had another trough that's digging down across the pacific northwest we have this ridge that's in place here over the eastern seaboard the players on the field are as such this ridge is going to be moving out of the way as this trough here moves to the northeast that allows this trough right here this short wave we call it or somewhat of a long wave in a way um, to move eastward and knock this ridge and trough out of the way. So we can see as we go forward in time all the way through Saturday afternoon into the evening hours, we have now what appears to be a long wave trough with some amplification to it on the right front quadrant with 60 to 80 knot winds down to the south. There is going to be again enough forcing, enough uh, falling heights and temperatures aloft to increase instability and some forcing for ascent for showers and thunderstorms to ignite along the convergence zone here, which is going to be our cold front. And again, that is for Saturday into Sunday. And we can see that really amplify. Look at this very strong um, trough that is in place there with um, winds greater than 70 to 80 knots at 500 millibars, which is 18,000 feet into the atmosphere. Now, what about moisture? Yeah, we got enough moisture that is going to be evacuating it northward. But again, with that EML that is going to be in place, that's going to make a little bit of uncertainty exactly where these storms will actually form. Because with a strong EML, which is an elevated mixed layer, we got drier air, more stable air aloft, but we also have a capping inversion. So if we can get enough boundary layer heating uh, with land heating as well, surface heating, we should say, we might be able to erode some of the capping over the high plains here where we do have an axis of dew points in the upper 50s to lower 60s. That, again, is stretching all the way from, say, um, southern Nebraska into Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. Going forward now all the way into Saturday, um, that was Friday. Now, this is Saturday. We can see more moisture advection here with upper uh, 50 dew points, low 60s, all the way into the mid-60 dew points, all the way down across the Arklatex area. But a lot of the forcing will probably be focused again from right about here that I have circled all the way down perhaps into northern portion of Arkansas for Saturday afternoon into early Sunday morning. And that's where, again, we'll have the, the Boeing line segment of heavy rainfall, strong winds of 65 miles an hour, and perhaps maybe some large hailstones of at least one or two inches in diameter and that continues all the way into sunday so of course we have a slight risk for severe weather that is issued by the climate or storm prediction center all the way from again this is for friday slight risk there for marginal and slight for dfw including for the okc area of oklahoma this goes all the way into the kansas area with a level two out of five on the severity weather index scale. Now, some of you are already saying that this is driven by a SIG. Yes, SIG does not always mean a tornado outbreak or a severe weather outbreak. I want you all to please listen closely, okay? Pay attention here. A significant risk could either be driven by tornadoes, which in this case, not gonna happen, could be driven by wind, 
probably not going to happen. But mainly, this slight risk here is driven by large hail production. Likely, again, 2 plus inches. 2 plus inches is deemed significant. So that extends all the way from northern and central portion there of Kansas all the way into northern um, Texas. Now, further south here, this is pretty much a little bit more conditional. Now, further north, say from central Oklahoma all the way into, say, um, southern Nebraska and Kansas is more of a likelihood focus point for severe weather. Nothing that scares me. Nothing that wants to tell me a severe outbreak. So please um, consider that. 15 sig does not mean there's a severe weather outbreak by any standards. It's driven by large hail, and I guarantee that's what it's for. I'm very confident. So now, day four includes, again, for the uh, for kind of the Ozarks and for Southern Illinois, as you can see here, with a 15% risk for severe weather. All right, well, that's going to sum it up for today's video. If you did enjoy the content and the video production, please consider hitting the like button, sharing this video with their family and friends on social media, and hitting the red subscribe button and all notifications, please, so that way you get all notifications every time I release these videos.